The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello and welcome to The Harvest Show today. Trust you had a great holiday weekend, but listen, on today's program, comparing ourselves to one another can be dangerous and it's unbiblical. Author Lisa Lloyd explains why in a conversation about living the life that God intended. And grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. Pastor Mark Lance shares the dangers of materialism in the message, How Much Is Too Much? As always, we want to connect with you today, so hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, and even live at lacy.com. That email address comes right to our set. Stay with us. World News begins right now. And a pleasant good day, everybody, on this Tuesday, May 30th, 2017. Here's what's happening in your world. North Korean state television today aired video of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un giving field guidance at Monday's test fire of a Scud-type ballistic missile. South Korean officials say the missile landed in Japan's maritime economic zone, flying about 280 miles. Monday's test was the North's ninth ballistic missile launch this year. It may have been meant more as a political and military message to outsiders than as a crucial test of not yet perfected technology. At least nine people were killed in a car bomb explosion in Baghdad today. The city was still reeling from a massive bombing on Monday by Islamic State outside a popular ice cream shop that killed 15. An explosives-laden car went off during rush hour near the public pension office in one of Baghdad's bustling commercial hubs. At least 15 people were wounded in today's attack. The former Panamanian dictator Manuel Noriega has died at the age of 83. The one-time U.S. ally was ousted as Panama's dictator by an American invasion in 1989. Once he was ousted, Noriega served a prison sentence for the rest of his life on drug charges he had recently undergone surgery for a brain tumor. Thousands of Venezuelans wanting a new constitution marched in Caracas Monday, but were again doused with water and tear gas by government troops as they made their way along the Francisco Fajardo Highway. On several occasions, video from local media captured incidents of violence as National Guard officers beat protesters in broad daylight. Protests against President Nicolas Maduro's government have left at least 60 people dead in the last two months. The opposition wants immediate presidential elections and the release of political prisoners. And hundreds of protesters opposing Texas's tough new anti-sanctuary cities law launched a raucous demonstration from the public gallery in the Texas House Monday, briefly halting work and prompting legislatures on the floor below to scuffle and even threaten gun violence. Activists started yelling and drowning out the legislators below. We've got to make sure that we hold uh, politicians accountable who say these hateful things. The state house leadership stopped the session and asked state troopers to clear the gallery. The demonstration continued for about 20 minutes as officers led people out of the chamber peacefully in small groups. There were no reports of arrest. Still to come, Pastor Mark Lance has today's teaching, but up next, author Lisa Lloyd explains why comparing ourselves to one another can be dangerous, and it's quite frankly unbiblical. We're right back with that story after this. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. Here in Malawi in this area, there are no deep wells. These are shallow wells dug in the bottom of a dried out riverbed where they wait for water to rise up through the rocks below. Memory here, she's got about five gallons, 40 pounds of water that she'll carry on her head back to her home just to have uh, for her and her family. There's an opportunity for you to help sponsor a well so that in places like this, they have a deep water well nearby so they can have healthy water for a healthy life. Life can be compared to a series of auditions. Regardless of who we are, we are constantly auditioning for a part, says our guest. Author and actor Lisa Lloyd is here to help us shift the focus back to God 
where it should be. Welcome to The Harvest Show, Lisa. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Okay, so as a professional actor, you are always auditioning. I see some, you know, parallels between what you do for a living and your new message. Kind of tell us your backstory. How did you get into acting? Well, I've always been a dancer since I was basically able to walk and danced for the longest time. And then when I was in third grade, my mom had me audition for this little babes in Toyland at a little community <laughs> theater in Texas. And so that's kind of how I started and got into high school. A little, when I got into high school, I got into theater a little bit more mm -hmm. and majored in theater in college and then got an agent outside of college, lived in LA for a little bit and have been kind of going nonstop ever since. And you've been involved with some very high profile shows, uh, The Bold and the Beautiful. Mm -hmm. What are some of the others? I've been on Young and the Restless and Prison Break. Oh, did, that, did I have that wrong? Was it Young and the Restless? No, it was both, 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 both of them. Okay, it was both I, of them. It, both of them, okay. <laughs> you were right. Um, and then What Would You Do? And then I also have done a good, good amount of commercials and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, too. So. Mm -hmm. What parallels do you see, though, in uh, kind of living your faith and living your life uh, versus not, well, compared to what you've got to do for your, your profession and kind of changing your, your, your persona to fit the audition or the people that you're in front of for the moment? Yeah, I, I really try and be me as much as I can. You know, when I'm just, especially when I'm going to an audition, I try and bring myself to the character. Mm -hmm. But then I also know that on camera, people just, people want to see real people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be myself. And then when I go in the audition as a believer, um, I'm really trying to ask the Lord, hey God, how, how could you glorify yourself through me? through this audition, just whether it is just the using of my gifts and my talents, even though I'm not going to be talking about you necessarily for this, you know, Dove product commercial audition. Right. <laughs> um, how can you, how, how can I use my talent for, for your glory? glory? And even in spending time talking with other actors who are also waiting to go audition, how can I build relationships with them, mm -hmm. which I think glorifies God and makes him famous too. Mm -hmm. And this is the larger message that you're sharing with your readers in Chasing Famous, living the life you've always auditioned for. And what you're saying basically is, if we live the life God has created us to live, um, then we will be successful. But the problem is, we don't always do that, do we? No, we don't. I think we compare ourselves mm -hmm. quite a bit. Um, I often will look at another actor or another actress and want their success and what do I need to do mm. to position myself to be have their esteem and have their success and have the applause that they're getting. And I think that's a trap because then what happens is I'm so focused on them that I'm not focused on me and how God has wired me and how he's uniquely created me. Like God doesn't need me to be you. He's made mm -hmm. you, you, and he does it, he's already got one of you. He just needs me to be me. And, and I think what happens is when I am comparing myself to other people, I'm very inward focused, right? I'm thinking about me right. and, you know, I'm kind of living like this. And God wants me to live open. He wants me to live, uh, live, live a life that, that glorifies him. And, and, and I'm not, and not distracted by who I'm not and only concerned with mm. who I am and how he's made me. And, and how do you kind of uh, deal with that in the moment, though? You know, mm -hmm. you're in a very competitive field, and, and many of us have different uh, areas where we're, we're, you know, kind of looking for, for work or we're looking for specific, you know, advancements. How do you, how do you kind of catch yourself in the moment to remind yourself to just be you? Well, I'm not always great at it. Sometimes I end up comparing myself. You know, I wrote a book on how we can glorify God and not compare ourselves, but I think that's because God gave me a lot of material because mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, he's wrestled with me so much on it, you know? So, um, but in, in the moment, um, I, I, I'm trying to be, in, I'm trying to pray before I'm in situations, you know, mm -hmm. even before I, I go into a, a, an audition or into a situation where I could, because I know when those, those little mm. triggers are. So mm -hmm. I try and remember to pray. Um, that God will help me remember that. And mm -hmm. sometimes I am really successful at it and sometimes I'm not, but I think it's just kind of a trying to be rhythmic and repetitive with my focus and my prayer keeps me focused mm -hmm. on how I can glorify God. So this is a huge statement. You say that God delights in using our shortcomings and even mm -hmm. our former disdain for his name, for his glory. Unpack uh -huh. that a little bit. Well, I believe, you know, as a, a I, I wrote that because I, God has done a, a, an amazing work in my life. Mm -hmm. I became a Christian when I was six, and then by the time I was 15, um, I had given up my virginity. 
Um, and then by the time I was 18, I found out that I was pregnant. And so I was scared to death as a Christian, scared to death to, to, to go to the church or go to my parents or go to my friends because I'd been living this like double life. Mm. And so the only way out of that to me was to terminate my pregnancy. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what I did. But here's what I love about God. I love that he doesn't give up on us. He doesn't, we don't make mistakes. And he goes, well, you know, too bad. No, he passionately pursues us and wants to to change change the script right and he wants he wants us to to use our shortcomings mm -hmm. for his glory and what god did in that is he used a friend and he spoke to me through a friend and reminded me of how crazy he was about me how much he loved me and that there was nothing i could do that would stop his love for me and he changed my life and i looked at my sin and i all of a sudden for the first time in years i wanted nothing more to do with it and I, I turned around 180 degrees in the other direction, and I've mm -hmm. never been the same. Wow. But I think what we need to do when we have mistakes that we've made is, is we need to be sharing those. We need to be talking about those. And I think he does delight in using mm -hmm. our shortcomings, our former disdain for his name, for his glory. And he gets to do that when we speak about it, when we talk about it. And I, I realize that takes bravery. It takes courage to do that. But God gets all the glory when we get to point the what could have been our destruction when, when we get to point the spotlight onto God. Mm. And kind of, wow. Kind of like what, what Paul said, I'd rather mm -hmm. glory in my weaknesses so that Christ's strength could be magnified or revealed in and through me. Exactly. Uh, going from something heavy to maybe something quite a bit lighter, mm -hmm. uh, how do you deal with social media when we're thinking about this, this comparing ourselves to one another, which mm -hmm. is unwise as, as we read right. in the book of Corinthians? It's so easy to do, right? Yeah. It's so easy because it's everywhere, you know, the images and the social media and even the little tickers on the side of social media. Um, I think that I have to recognize and remember, especially as a female, that so many images have been photoshopped, right? Like mm -hmm. there's everything has been photoshopped. 99.9% .9 <laughs> of everything's been photoshopped. So if I want to be this, you know, gorgeous gal on the side of social media or whatever, that, then that's being modeled for me or whatever. I have to remember that's that's a Photoshop um, image, and that kind of it's a gut check for me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's true. Not real. But then even like you know, not just the models, but then you know our friends and stuff. Yes, post right, yeah. the positive, happy things. And yeah. so I think that I can't do anything about what they're going to do, mm -hmm. you know. But what I can do is I can be real and I can be vulnerable on social media to say, okay, here's who I am. Here's how I'm struggling. And, and I think that allows, I think vulnerability breeds vulnerability. Mm. And when I'm vulnerable on social media and I'm vulnerable in my life and I'm, I don't have it all together, I don't, you know, I'm not perfect, then other people get to breathe um, too and say, oh my goodness, I'm not alone. Mm. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. So talk about the reaction to your message and being authentic mm -hmm. when you're out speaking. I know that you speak to women across the country mm -hmm. and sharing your message. I'd imagine that the atmosphere shifts when you just open up and you're honest about your mistakes. There is something that happens in the room when, mm -hmm. when, I, when I share that because I think pe people lean in mm -hmm. because I, they're, they're, they're like really seriously, you're on a platform, you know, you're here speaking to us as an authority and you, have, you don't have your stuff together. You know, you, you, you haven't mm -hmm. lived a perfect life. And, and I think people, people are able to say, oh yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's a, and it's a great thing because we are all just sinners, right? We're all sinners. Um, the, the most popular person in the world, is we're all just sinners, and, and we all need Jesus. And I think when we talk about that and we get real with that, then, then God gets the focus. He gets the spotlight. He gets the credit and the glory, which is, which is exactly what he wants. So when that light bulb comes on, mm -hmm. what do you want women to do, or people, anyone, reading this project? Right. Because... I mean, this is a project I'm sure men can benefit mm -hmm, from as well. Mm -hmm. What do you want them to do to jumpstart this process? I want them in order to make, to feel like they can make God famous, I want them to believe truth. I want them to believe mm -hmm. the truth that God wants to use them and their stories and their pain for his glory. And I want them to feel the freedom to be able to talk about it, to, to be able to recognize that God has gifted and talented them uniquely and he wants to use their gifts um, for his glory. He wants to use their everyday lives for his glory um, through in their parenting, in their marriage. Um, when God asks them to be obedient despite the sacrifice, to trust him in the center of their no way out, you know, mm. in their circumstances, it seems so overwhelming. Um, God wants them to, God wants the glory in all of that. And mm. so um, it is, it is not just, making God famous is not just for those who have a big platform. 
Making God Famous, um, we are all here. It is our purpose. It is why we are still here. We are here for the glory and the fame and the renown of God. And God, and God can use anyone, you know, whether it's a stay-at-home mom, a CEO, a doctor, a lawyer, anybody, um, someone on the street. God, God, God's, God's version of success is not our version of success. He doesn't compare us like we mm -hmm. compare. Mm -hmm. You know, he talks about that all over scripture and he wants to use everybody. So when we, um, when we use these principles, then we live better lives, don't mm -hmm. we? We're, we are fulfilled and content. It's a starring role that's been created for us, it, right? It, it is. It's mm -hmm. a starring role where we get to stand and God gets to shine, shine through, through us. us. Right. Right? And so he does ultimately get the credit. He uses us as the megaphone, as the instrument, mm -hmm. but he gets he gets the glory. And it, there is so much peace in that. Okay. I'm going to, I cut you off there nope. because I really want you to look into your camera right in front of you yes. and just speak to people to encourage them, um, to let them know that they can, you know, be all that God has called them to be. Mm-hmm. Right here? Right there. Right there. <laughs> um, God has purposed you. He has called you. He's placed you here on purpose, for a purpose. Um, don't believe the lie that anyone has told you or that you've told yourself or that the enemy's told you that you can't be used. God wants to use you in a great, magnificent, and mighty way for his glory and for his fame. And he has gifted and talented you. He wants to use your everyday life to bring him great glory. And you can do that today in the little mundane things or in the big ways. However God has gives you that opportunity, you can, you can do that today. Thank you Amen. so much. Amen. Thanks for sharing your insights with us. To connect with Lisa, go to ChasingFamousBook.com or go to LisaLloyd.org. And if you can't remember that, you know the drill. Just go to Harvest-TV.com for a link to her new project. It's called Chasing Famous. Coming up later, Brian Bush with your prayer request. But up next, Pastor Mark Lance with today's connections. We'll be right back. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. Do you long to visit the Holy Land, but don't want to travel alone? On a Lassie tour to Israel, you're not alone. Our team of professionals has more than 50 years experience bringing Christians together in the fascinating land of the Bible. You and your new friends will worship together as you sail the Sea of Galilee, break bread in the Garden Tomb, and get baptized in the Jordan River, just like Jesus and the disciples did more than 2,000 years ago. What better way to experience the sights and sounds of ancient Jerusalem than with other believers from around the world? To join us for a life-changing trip to Israel, November 8th through 17th, 2017, go online to lasseetours.com or call 1-800-685-3732. Tell the operator to send you a free information packet today. But seats are limited, so don't wait. Call now. Just one visit to the Holy Land and your faith will never be the same. I think all of us understand the fact that we are living today in a society that's driven by materialism. We're pervaded with this mindset that the more you have, the better off you are. It's a mindset that causes us to believe that little phrase that said, he who dies with the most toys wins. Remember John D. Rockefeller? Somebody asked him one time, how much money is enough money? His answer was just a little more. In other words, in his mind, you can never have too much money. You can never have too big of a house or too luxurious of a car. You can never have too many things. But the question that as believers we need to answer is, what does the Bible say about how to handle this spirit of materialism? How much 
is too much. So today and Thursday, I want to give you a couple of principles from 1 Timothy chapter number 6. So grab your Bibles, let's turn together. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 5, where Paul said, Perverse disputings of men, of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, supposing, get this, that gain is godliness. He said, From such withdraw thyself. The first principle I want to share is this. It's not about what you have. It's about who you are. You see, in Paul's day, there were those who would come into the church and they were using Christianity as a means by which to get gain, to receive notoriety. They weren't there out of a desire to follow Jesus for who he is, but rather they were teaching this false doctrine that the more worldly goods you gained, well, then the more godly you must be, putting gain and godliness on the same level. Now, let me just cut to the chase here. I believe God wants us to be blessed but your level of spirituality is not measured by the model of car that is parked in your garage, which means we can't judge a person based on what they have or maybe what they don't have in life. We can't judge a man by the content of his possessions. We've got to judge him by the character of his heart because character will take you much farther in life than possessions ever will. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 6? He said, don't lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and, moth and rust corrupts, thieves break through and steal. He said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupts and thieves do not break through and they don't steal. Listen, you may be watching right now. The enemy's got you convinced that you've got to spend more time at work. You've got to work more to get ahead in life. And consequently, your marriage is suffering. Your children are suffering. Your walk with God is suffering. God is saying it's time to get your priorities right. Realize that everything you work for in this world, it's going to fade. But the character, the integrity you possess is going to last throughout all of eternity. So today, get your eyes off this present world. Start looking at the world to come. There's more that God has in store than you could ever imagine. And as always, we're here to pray with you. If you're struggling with any issue in life, whether it's money, materialism, or anything, we're here to pray. And Brian Bush is in Israel right now standing by with your prayer request. Let's go together and let's pray. Brian. Hello, everybody. Brian Bush here in Jerusalem. So glad to be with you. You know, we are interactive creatures, and God wants us to share our burdens, and we do just that here at Prayer Line. Let's go straight to an anonymous caller from Georgia. I know that I don't want to die. I have found out that I am HIV positive. Well, let's go and pray for this person right now. Dear God, we thank you for this caller now confronted with their mortality. Help them to know your gracious salvation and reverse, we ask, the HIV. Next up, we have Susan. Uh, she's asking for deliverance from drugs and alcohol and that David, Ginny, Karen, Johnny, and the generational curse will be destroyed. Well, let's go to God in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, please bless Susan with deliverance from addiction and bless the children that they will have no part in such things. And then lastly, our partner in faith, Mary Huckingbottom, uh, she's asking for prayers for her daughter, Denise, who has a hernia, her son, Alvin, who's into drugs. Uh, she has shingles, a heart problem. He's diabetic and has a head tremor. Let's pray for them right now. Dear Jesus, thank you for Mary. We pray for her son and her daughter and the physical challenges that they are facing. May their souls be filled with resurrection joy, safe and secure in your holy name. We pray this and all our prayers today. Amen. Friends, we're here to help you. You can contact Prayer Line at any time at 1-800-365-3732. Let's go back to the studio. Thanks, Brian. In addition to the toll-free number there that Brian just mentioned that you see on your screen, you can also connect with us through email, prayer at lacy.com. Great uh, staff and volunteers that will get your email, pray, and respond back to you as well. And if you'd like to write, our street address is 61300 Ironwood Road in South Bend, Indiana, 46614 is the zip code. And Pastor Mark, uh, is great uh, kind of weaving between your mm -hmm. message today as well as what uh, Lisa Lloyd, our guest, had to share right. about the spirit of, of materialism mm -hmm. that sometimes works its way out in the way we compare ourselves with others, others' ways of, of judging our spirituality by what we have or don't mm -hmm. have. And, and there are 
You can get on the ditch on either side on that one, Absolutely, can't you? you can. And it's very, and I love what Lisa said about the comparing ourselves with each other because it's such a trap that we get into. Like she said, we get on social media, we see these people living these glorious lives when in reality their life is no different than us. And I think we've really got to keep our focus on what is true, what is right, what the Word says, and who God created us to be. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about materialism and just is there ever a, such a thing as too much? And there is. I mean, it's not saying, the Bible is not saying God doesn't want us of course. to have things and to live, you know, nice lives mm -hmm. or what have you. But there is a such thing as too much, isn't there? When it begins, when, when your possessions begin to possess you, that's perfect. when it's too much. That's a perfect point. And I believe that's where so many people, they, they, they get this misconception that, well, I can't be rich if I'm going to be a believer. Well, that's not what God says at all. But it's about priorities and making sure that our godliness is first and our gain is second. And I believe God will bless you as you put him first in your life. You know, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Mm -hmm. So it's all about priorities. Mm -hmm. Pastor, we've got just a few moments here. And uh, for people that are struggling in that area, can you just... Mm -hmm. Uh, pray for us today. Amen. Well, let's pray right now. And maybe you're watching and you've got some needs in your life and you're asking God to meet those needs. I'm going to agree with you for that to happen right today. Father, we thank you. Thank you that your word tells us that all of our needs are met according to your riches and glory. And I'm praying for that viewer right now. Lord, they have needs and the enemy's got them convinced that they're not being blessed but, Lord, I just pray that you would just bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow on Harvest. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples. He was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. The Sea Broadcasting partners in faith make it possible for millions to hear the word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help the Sea Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. When Dr. Lester Summerall founded the Sea Broadcasting decades ago to tell hurting people about Jesus, he knew they would need prayer. So he opened the International Prayer Line. Today, tens of thousands of callers a month receive life-changing prayer from our dedicated volunteers. But we need your help to expand the work of this vital ministry. Won't you consider partnering with Prayer Line with a monthly gift of $25? Your donation will help us reach the world. Call today. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.